1989. In China, the Tiananmen Square protests happened, in Germany, the Berlin Wall fell, and in Japan, Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket was released, considered by many to be the epitome of Gundam's anti-war message. Others then fell in love with the absolutely gorgeous mobile suit designs made by Yutaka Izubuchi. Some of these shone in all of their OVA glory, and others were unfortunately meant to make those already shining machines shine even brighter. And one of these that fell into the latter category was unfortunately one of my personal favorites, the Jim Sniper 2. An overall beast of a mobile suit that looks amazing to boot. So obviously, as soon as I saw it, I knew that I wanted it as a model kit. So today, I'm going to have a look at the history of the Jim Sniper 2 kits, brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Just like the Jim Sniper 2 was redesigned as a streamlined and even higher performance version of the Jim Sniper Custom, Ridge Wallet is the space age upgrade for your traditional bulky wallet. It's compact and made out of durable materials, allowing you to store it almost anywhere. And despite its size, it has enough room for up to 12 cards, including cash. In fact, the Rich team is so confident that you'll like it, that they'll even let you test drive it for 45 days. Don't like it? Send it back and you'll get a full refund. And remember that theft problem in the Gunham universe? Well, thanks to RFID blocking technology, you at least won't have to worry about digital pickpocketers with your Rich wallet. So check it out with the link in the description down below, and use the code Kakarot for a 15% discount. With over 30 colors and styles, there's bound to be at least one that is perfect for you. And talking about perfection, as I said in the beginning, 0080 launched in 1989, and things were looking good for the Jim Sniper 2. On the model kit front, that is. The second kit of the line was the Jim Command ground type, which already launched one month after the first episode of the OVA. Three months later then, it was the space type's turn to get a Gunpla, so surely it wouldn't be too long before the Jim Sniper 2 would get its very own. 2003. With the release of the Jim Cold Districts type, there was, again, no doubt that the Jim Sniper 2 would be released any day now. Then, in May of 2004, we got the Jim Command ground type, closely followed by the space type in November of the same year. Any day now. Any day now. Eventually, I got so desperate for anything Jim Sniper 2 related that I immediately got the old Robot Damashi figure back when it was released in 2010. It was already more than 20 years after the OVA had ended, and there still wasn't a model kit in sight except for a few resin kits. But then finally, in 2012, we got the very first Jim Sniper 2 Gunpla ever. For 1,500 yen, a little under 15 US, we could finally buy the Jim Sniper 2 in 144 scale as part of the High Grade Universal Century line. And it even came with a little Dragon E2. Was it worth the wait? Mostly yes. Because it was released so much later than the other gyms from 0080, it got to take advantage of significant increases in Bandai's Gumpla technology. Combine that then with nice proportions, a sliding head visor, two beam sabers, a sniper rifle and a machine gun, and you've got yourself a very good gym sniper too that still holds up very well today. But it wasn't perfect either. The Jim Sniper 2 was released at the time that Bandai suddenly decided that high grades of grunt machines no longer deserved a double elbow joint. Making the Jim Sniper 2 objectively inferior in that department to some older Jim model kits like the Jim 2 or the Jim Quell. Another trend then that this kit suffered from was Bandai printing all of the stickers on the see-through marking sticker sheet, rather than including a separate foil sticker sheet as they had been doing 
for like forever. The big problems here are that these stickers are less sticky, the color underneath still bleeds through, and in case of the sensor stickers, they aren't shiny like they should be. Fortunately, this was something that Bandai eventually stopped doing. And since we're talking about the negatives, the shield. This is a straight up downgrade from the very similar shield that was included with the Gym Custom and the Gym Cannon 2. The vent-esque things are no longer molded separately, and the same goes for the spare ammo magazines on the inside. But despite these few negatives, overall the Gym Sniper 2 is still a very good model kit. And ironically enough, after having ignored the Gym Sniper 2 for so long, Bandai suddenly couldn't stop making them. Shortly after the original release, P. Bandai made the fan favorite Gym Sniper 2 White Dingo version. In terms of looks, it was mostly the same, the color scheme was different, the marking stickers were different, and it now came with a Vulcan pot on the right side of the head. But the big difference was in the accessories. It still came with the 90mm bullpup machine gun and sniper rifle of the original, but it now also came with a railgun, a 100mm machine gun, its trademark beam sniper rifle, its trademark shield with kickstand included, a hover truck, a ground gym head, and of course a few leftover parts. But as awesome as that beam sniper rifle may look, there is one thing that really disappointed me here. Because of the aforementioned trend of not using shiny stickers, the scope uses this really dull one. That looks especially bad when you compare it to the scope of the version that came with the 1999 Gym Sniper. And for those wondering why it came with seemingly random things like a ground gym head and a railgun, well, that is because it reused some runners from the Ground War set featuring the Ground Gundam. And then in 2016, the Gym Sniper 2 Lido Wolf Custom would be released. This time, it was just a color swap of the original that came with different decals, leftover parts, and excluded the Dragon E. But, in between those two remolds, something even better happened. Gundam Build Fighters. And in the series, a version of the Gym Sniper 2 was one of the main antagonists the Gym Sniper K9. Its performance in the show was so much better than in 0080, and the model kit is also my favorite Gym Sniper 2 in 144 scale. Not only can it be built as a Gym Sniper K9, with its added military flair, combat knife, dual pistols, and dog corpse mounted onto the back, but you also get all of the parts to build the regular Gym Sniper 2, or you can do like me and build something in between with the best of both. Because Gunpla is freedom. And this is also the only Gym Sniper 2 kit in 144th scale that comes with normal stickers. On camera, I don't think the difference is super clear on the head, but just look at the scopes of the machine guns. And the difference is even bigger on the sniper rifles, because the other kits don't have stickers for that thing, period. Also, what I really appreciate about this kit is the inclusion of a left trigger finger hand. Something you don't see too often on high grades. And the good news for the Gym Sniper 2 just didn't stop. Despite being the last 0080 Gym to get a high grade, it would be the first one to get a master grade in 2017. And unlike its high-grade rendition, this kit sure as hell didn't suffer from any significant cut corners. The worst I can say here is that it was the first master grade of a mass production machine that didn't include a standing pilot figure. Something that has unfortunately continued with completely new master grade mass production units like the Jagan and the Jin. Seriously, what is up with the Gym Sniper 2 being the harbinger of trends that I don't like? But you know what they say, it's what's on the inside that counts. A slightly modified and upgraded version of the 2.0 inner frame used by the RX-78 II in 2008. And while you might think that 
using a, at that point, almost decade old inner frame would be bad, I would argue that this frame is still one of the best ones out there, even being better than some of the modern ones. Not only is it highly mobile, but it also looks amazing, and we've got a bunch of really cool pistons, something that really makes this thing feel real. The only thing that I don't quite like about this model kit is how it doesn't have fully articulated hands, something that the Master Grades have unfortunately started moving away from. I can understand the viewpoint that it does make it easier to mount weapons, but fully articulated hands just allow for so much more expression in my opinion. So fortunately, in the same year we got the Master Grade Gym Sniper 2 White Dingo version. That came with the fully articulated hands used by the RX-78 II version 3.0. Granted, this was done out of necessity because the Gym Sniper 2 comes with almost every weapon that it has access to in the Rise from the Ashes video game and the Beam Sniper Rifle. And rather than remolding them from scratch, Bandai scavenged them from older kits, so obviously they weren't going to have the necessary holes to hook them up to the fixed hands. The Beam Sniper Rifle is taken from the Gym Sniper, the Bazooka is from the Easy 8 and the Beam Rifle and the 100mm Machine Gun is taken from the regular Ground Gundam. Sure, the grip on the weapons is on the looser side, and particularly the color accuracy of the beam sniper rifle and beam rifle leave something to be desired, but I can't help but love the overall package that we're getting here. The K9 might have been my favorite Gym Sniper 2 in 144 scale, but this set is without a doubt my favorite Gym Sniper 2 period. It looks amazing, the articulation is perfect, and it comes with a huge amount of accessories. It might have taken almost three decades to get this thing, or two if you're counting from the Dreamcast game, but we finally got the Gym Sniper 2 we deserve. Still, it is funny that the high grade has the better beam sniper rifle. Minus the scope. But this still isn't where the story of the Gym Sniper 2 ends. We also got a clear color version of the standard version in 2018, which was a limited edition for the Shizuoka Hobby Show, and then finally we got the Gym Sniper 2 Lido Wolf Custom as a P Banai exclusive in 2019. Two Gym Sniper 2 kits that I haven't gotten yet, but I'm definitely keeping my eyes open for the Lido Wolf one, which by the way is again just a recolor of the standard one. Which then makes me wonder, what could be next for Gym Sniper 2 model kits? As much as I personally like one, a real grade or perfect grade are definitely out of the question. And you might even think that all of the possible remolds have been done too. But there are two more variants that I could see Bandai turning either into a high grade or a master grade. The Spec Ops 1 from Blazing Phantom and the Titans variant from the Anaheim Laboratory Log. Both are just recolors with minor differences, which makes them perfect for a P Bandai release. The Spec Ops version has a different sniper scope and extra magazine on the left hip, and the Titans one also has a different sniper scope and comes with its own custom sniper rifle. And that has been all for this pilot episode of Gumpla History. Let me know if you enjoyed it and what you liked or disliked about the format. If it proves to be popular, I will definitely continue the series, but I can already tell you that with the current difficulties of getting older Gunpla, I will be limited in what I can do for the time being. With quite a few machines that I considered doing for the first episode, I missed like one or two important kits. and. For example, not having a clear color version I don't consider a problem, but not having the Master Grade 1.0 Sharzaku 2, that I do consider an issue. And then there's also the question of having to get the older glue together kits for machines from the original Gundam, Zeta Gundam and Double Zeta Gundam. But that is not to say that I can't do any more episodes with the kits that I have at the moment. 
So a big thank you to Rich Wallet for sponsoring this video. Again, links down below. Another big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day and I'll see you all next time.